July 1972 saw one of the most erratic tropical cyclones on record, Typhoon Rita, having an erratic path across the Western Pacific for 22 days. Rita would ultimately begin as a tropical depression on July the 5th, forming just east of the Mariana Islands as a tropical depression and becoming a tropical storm around 24 hours later. Rita would gradually intensify, reaching its peak intensity on July the 9th as a Category 5 with winds around 165 miles an hour. Rita would then weaken and move toward the northeast, then would undergo a bit of a loop and probably would become one of the most annoyingest storms track on record, attaining Category 2 intensity on seven occasions. Rita would ultimately then pass through the southern Japanese islands two times, ultimately moving north moving west of the Korean Peninsula, and ultimately moving into parts of Russia as a post tropical cyclone. Hurricane John makes it in at number 9 on the strange track list and it's something that we've been looking at for quite a few years and still it holds those records in the Eastern Pacific and worldwide for its extremely long track and the fact that it persisted for a whole month in August and September 1994. On top of that, John peaked as a Category 5 with recon flights in and around the storm. Here's one image of that here, and the storm looking very impressive on the satellite imagery around the storm's peak. What really makes the track strange is its very long duration and its path, which, as mentioned, broke records. In fact, when it entered the Western Pacific briefly and then came back into the Eastern Pacific, the National Hurricane Center's computers malfunctioned and they couldn't predict the storm properly, at least for a short time before they got it all fixed. On our analysis, John peaked with winds of 165 miles per hour, pressure of 917 millibars, and caused $15 million of damages along its path, which mostly didn't affect land, but some of the islands around the international dateline were affected by John's passage. Nadine was a very interesting storm. It went around in circles, didn't it? Uh, formed out of a tropical wave uh, in the tro in the central tropical Atlantic before really curving northward. Nadine then moved northeast and eventually due north, stalled, moved southeast, and eventually south, becoming extra-tropical on September 21st. Nadine then regenerated into a tropical storm on September 24th, stalled again, did a loop, and began moving west-northwest before moving south then recurving back northwest, intensifying into a hurricane again, then doing another loop, moving east, and became extra-tropical near the Azores on October 3rd, 2012. Nadine was the fourth longest lasting storm in the Atlantic Basin, and as you can tell by my description, had a very erratic track in the open Atlantic from September into October. Nadine occurred during Force 13's first full season tracking Atlantic tropical cyclones operationally, and covered the storm in not less than 12 updates, which was probably a record for the time until eclipsed by storms in the future. Nadine caused minimal damage, if any, as the storm threatened the Azores on multiple occasions, but ultimately missed. It did a clockwise loop and then a counterclockwise loop and then uh, turn post-tropical. <laughs> Cyclone Hyacinth, the eighth numbered tropical cyclone of the 1979-80 Southwest Indian Ocean season, um, had a strange track and that allowed the storm to dump a huge amount of rainfall, possibly the worldwide record, at over six meters of rain over the storm's 15-day trek around the Southwest Indian Ocean Basin. So the storm started near Reunion, 
and then turned towards the northwest up to the coast of Madagascar, just about reached the coast, did a loop round and a U-turn and then towards the south, uh, going a natural direction at last, and then curved eastwards. And then it became a hurricane equivalent storm, looked like it was going back to Reunion, but then it turned northwest. And then it decided it wanted to stall over there as well, so it would turn south, then east, and then weakened again, and then turned towards the south, and finally disintegrated in the usual way for storms down in this part of the world. oddball of the 1999 hurricane season where it formed down in the southwestern part of the Caribbean which is for a normal November storm it's what you would normally expect at that time of year except most storms normally go east to west mainly to Nicaragua Honduras during the November season but uh Lenny had different plans it decided it was going to go west to east across the central Caribbean Scared Jamaica, scared Puerto Rico, and went across the Lesser Antilles, intensifying to a minimal hurricane, rapidly intensifying to a Category 4 just south of Puerto Rico, and delivering some uh, heavy rainfall and some winds through the Lesser Antilles before dying out in the MDR region of the Atlantic. Few storms that I remember tracking in 1999. Uh, I was 14 at the time, was my fourth season tracking so i knew of lenny but i didn't know like the full details until much later on third or fourth strongest atlantic november hurricane on record again it was recently passed by ada and iota along with the cuba hurricane of 1932 very oddball storm for sure Typhoon 15 of August and September 1910 will on the first look of things appear to be fairly innocuous, but in fact this track is a massive anomaly. This storm formed near the Daito Islands of Japan, moved through the southern Ryukyu Islands and passed north of Taiwan. From there it skirted the coast of China all the way down to Hong Kong and beyond ended up in the Gulf of Tonkin before making landfall in Vietnam as a tropical storm. You might wonder how many storms have managed to do that after passing north of Taiwan. Well, the answer is just two. This one and another tropical cyclone in 1920 that weakened to a tropical depression before re-strengthening tropical storm status in the Gulf. Other occasions, there are two storms in 1960 that almost managed to do it passing over the island of Taiwan, but no other storm has actually managed to pass north of Taiwan and continue as a tropical storm that far south. An amazing storm. Hurricane Inez was the sixth hurricane and the third and final major hurricane of the above average 1966 hurricane season. At the time, it had, was the longest tracking Atlantic hurricane on record in terms of advisories issued at 65. It was a late September to early October system that formed in the main development region, tracked through the Caribbean, crossed Cuba uh, into the Florida Straits before impacting the Yucatan and making landfall near Tampico. Over its journey, it took a very unusual track and was the first on record to impact the Lesser and Greater Antilles, the Bahamas, Florida and Mexico. It was 
at the time notorious because of this unusual track, with the Associated Press describing it as the first to strike the Yucatan in many years. It was also the first noted to cross the Gulf of Mexico without turning north so late in the season. Unfortunately, because of its erratic track, it caused a lot of fatalities, estimated between 756 and 900. Earlier on in its track, as a very compact tropical cyclone, it rapidly intensified over the Eastern Caribbean, reaching a peak intensity of 929 millibars. In Herdat, it's listed as having winds of 150 miles per hour. However, recent reanalysis in 2017, conducted as part of the ongoing a hurricane reanalysis project concluded that Inez was likely a category 5 hurricane with winds of 165 miles per hour. Inez tried to tick as many landfall boxes as it could throughout its charade through the Caribbean and even its uh, small time over the Bahamas before moving through the Gulf. Don't forget by the way it peaked a second time as a category 4 before striking the coast of Mexico. This storm left up to 1,269 dead and caused significant damages totaling over 40,000 buildings and a damage price tag of $227 million. And now we step again into the vault of historical typhoons that hardly anyone's ever heard of. Back in 1924, which was a significant year for strange storm tracks, this one really took the cake. Typhoon 13, at least to our understanding, formed in early August as a tropical storm to the west of Iwo Jima. First started moving east, then north, then west, and then intensified to typhoon status and carried on intensifying as it passed the Daito Islands as a Category 3 and then just north of Okinawa as a Category 4. It kept going west into the East China Sea, then started to bend towards the southwest, started weakening gradually and stalled off Miyakojima and then it turned northeast back towards Okinawa which it almost made it to as a Category 1 and then it just passed north of the island once again, northwest this time, and stalled there for a couple of days whilst intensifying to Category 3 status for its secondary peak. It then swiveled back down towards the south, actually crossed Okinawa now as a Category 2, moving southeast, and then eventually turned northeast once again, passing the Daito Islands, and then headed towards the mainland, main islands of Japan. Moving northeast, it then turned north and stalled a bit more, then turned southwest and then turned towards the northwest, striking the Amami Islands and then made track for the Korean Peninsula. Category 2 at this point, it then steamed towards Jeju Island but turned at the last minute towards the northeast, weakened to a Category 1, passed between Japan and South Korea and turned post-tropical as it approached the northern part of Honshu. Cyclone Winston, now that's a storm I remember tracking back in uh, 2016, of course. Um, record breaking system for uh, that part of the globe. So, Cyclone Winston was not only had this strange track, but it was also one of the strongest tropical cyclones ever recorded in the southern hemisphere. It was a category 5 when it made landfall in Fiji at 180 miles per hour. With Force 13 reaching one year's streaming experience by the time Winston was raging through the South Pacific, of course the Force 13 team was on it with live coverage. Total window failure is very, very likely to occur. Uh, roof failure is very likely to occur. Even after it dissipated into a remnant low, the circulation was like very much so uh, prominent uh, still on uh, the storm and I was just like, I just had enough of the storm, I just really hope it dies and it eventually did die um, just to the east of um, Australia. Damages in Fiji were severe with 1.4 billion dollars in damages. We've rated this storm with peak intensity of 180 miles per hour and a pressure around 905 millibars. At 
number one is a storm that I've done extensive research on recently, and this is so much of an anomaly it's unreal. It's easily the biggest anomaly in the whole southern hemisphere. It's Cyclone Hinano in 1989. The storm likely formed early on February the 20th, near 24 degrees south, 124 degrees west. Now look just where in the world that is, and you'll find that nothing has ever formed in that location. But what happened next was even more baffling. 24 hours later, a shallow eye appeared with a red ring, minus 70 degree cloud tops, near 26 degrees south, 125 degrees west. At this point, the people at Wellington noticed New Zealand, and it took the GTWC two more days to see it, the Joint Typhoon Warning Center, and by which point it had weakened a little bit. Hinano was a tiny storm, and it re-intensified as it moved northwestwards by now, peaking as a likely Category 4, near 27 degrees south, 137 degrees west. The storm then weakened from there, and ceased to be a tropical cyclone early on February the 28th, near 33 south, 142 degrees west. Until this finding, I thought this was only possible in computer-generated sims.